Imagine you put your house on the market. It hasn't gone anywhere. You've taken your own photos. You want to save some money. It's been a couple months and you've had to drop the price by $50,000, but the house down the street sold in two weeks for 150,000 over. What was the difference? Most likely is the photos. Most likely it was how the brand, how everything came across and how you just presented yourself. That's why I'm joined with Ashley from RE Pix as she is a top-notch professional, best in class photographer. And we're going to be diving deep into understanding what it takes to, to do and to be the best. And so I'm going to hand it over to Ashley and have her introduce herself a little bit and talk about her business. I'm going to ask questions, but stay till the end because she's going to reveal the top tips on what it takes to, to really stand out. Mm -hmm. So Ashley, welcome. Hi everybody. Thank you for having me here, David. I'm so excited to be on this interview with you. So I started RePix, my company 13 years ago now. And I've always been into visual storytelling and how we can put our best foot forward. And I do that through real estate marketing. We have realtors, commercial developers. We've worked for really big brands such as Nike and some really cool spots around Portland that we've photographed. And I love being a part of all of it. So I'm excited to talk about marketing and online presence. I think we got some cool stuff to cover. Exciting. Exciting. I've been looking forward to this interview with real estate and with homes and helping people. Who's your ideal client? Who do you serve the most? Uh, the, the most? Tell me a little mm -hmm. bit about your ideal client. So our ideal client is typically a realtor or like a developer, someone that manages a property. So that could even be someone that manages a hotel or a restaurant, any building that we can photograph to be able to put um, images online for you is our ideal client, someone who manages a property. Importance of good imagery. Tell me about the images, like what is a good image versus not a good image? Why does images matter? Let's just go back to basics. Right. Images are so important in today's modern world because we are searching for everything online. Like when I want to go find a restaurant, I look on Google or Yelp. When I want to find a store, I'm looking online and the pictures that come up definitely impact me showing up to that location. And you have to understand that this is happening for real estate too. Like if you're listing a property, you have to have good visual imagery. So and a good image to me is one that is clear, has nice, bright lighting, good colors. It doesn't look like AI edited it, not too enough to capture your attention to want to swipe to the next photo. You've experienced before looking online. I'm sure you can think of like a restaurant that you didn't want to go to because the images were like, mm, not so good. And same houses online for real estate. There's so many ways to take a photo. Now we have these devices that we can take photos on. They do take really great photos nowadays, but without having someone who knows how to truly capture an image, it can lead to your downfall of having a poor presentation online, a good image. There's a lot that goes on behind Yeah, that. a picture says a thousand words. Yeah. So have you had an experience where like you've seen a bad picture and then like, oh, I'm not going there or I don't want to look at that further? <laughs> the importance of online presence. When the public is coming to see a listing, you want to make sure, like we said earlier, that the first few images are really grabbing their attempt attention, making them want to swipe to the next image because the presence, the online presence your listing is giving is talking a lot, shows a lot about the property. So you only have a few seconds to capture someone's attention and you want to make sure that the way you're presenting yourself and your listing online is really good. And it's what you're wanting to present. There's a lot that goes on behind the imagery, like as far as preparing it to go, but then you have to think about the next step of it. How are you showing up online as a realtor? How are you, how's your listing show up online to a buyer? And I think that's where the part that sets my business apart is that we understand the entire concept of the visual representation of you and your listing as a realtor, as a builder, a developer. We understand that it's so much more than imagery. I think that's what we should talk about next, just getting into the branding and how you show up online. Branding and professional photography. With branding, how has professional photography when you think about branding and you consult with brand, when you're talking with people about mm -hmm. branding, as you mentioned, and you asked me earlier, have I seen images? 
that has made or break do you i want to move forward or any like fighting senses well, definitely i'll share from the real estate perspective again just because it's my main clientele but when you present your properties online like how do you want to be perceived as an agent because agents can take their own photos you can hire someone who has a digital camera. It's your friend's cousin, your best friend's sister, whatever. You can hire anybody to take professional photos nowadays, but is it presenting yourself and your business in the way that you want to be perceived from your audience? And I think that's just where it begins. How do you want to show up online? What do you want people to see when they first see, see you online? And that's where the visual imagery comes in, whether it's photos, nice photos of a restaurant, nice photos of the food that you have to offer, nice photos of a listing, like they say a lot about you. So what is your brand? What are you trying to show up as? And how can you make sure you're being authentic and showing up in a way that is real to you and capturing the right kind of audience? So I want to ask you, David, your audience is boomers. A lot of it's word of mouth and just who do you mm. know? And various mediums too, like YouTube and creating videos like this and providing mm. content, but I'm also doing workshops and communicating with people. So I do want to have a consistent brand and communicate. And I wrote a book mm. and it has boomers on there and they're having a conversation and that's where my heart's at mm. because that's my parents and my in-laws and just like the, yeah. the wealth wave, the $14 trillion wealth wave that's going to be changing hands. And it's, there's a lot of fraud out there, a lot mm -hmm. of bad advice. And so I want to make sure that I'm providing good advice and I'm avoiding those five most expensive words. This could have been avoided. There are so mm -hmm. many things that are happening from a legal tax succession, financial planning standpoint that it's tax related. Now taxes, now taxes, retirement tax upon death. And how do we help people? And my definition of a tax is not necessarily what we pay to the government, but what we pay in extra insurance or fees or whatever it is mm. that is going to cost us more than what we should be paying. There's a tax of doing yourself and a tax of doing it two or three times or missing out in that story. Like I mentioned, that person mm -hmm. that had to drop their house versus the house down the street. And as you confirmed in your story about that is true on a professional photography and having a good brand. Consistency in marketing. And I think for me, it's like, I want to show up and I want to be consistent with all my marketing, with all my websites, with all my social media, mm -hmm. everything's going to be similar colors, photos, and things are going to be the same brand and same consistent yeah. same voice of people. Because I used to be like, I'd have this over here and that over there. And people are like, are you two different companies? I'm <laughs> yeah. Phones, and it was just, it threw people off. It's so easy to do. There's so many options for branding now. There's so many DIY things you can do. And I'm, I'm pro DIY if you can do it yourself and make it look nice, but there's so much you need to think about. And like you said, there is a tax to doing it yourself. And if you're not hiring a professional, there is a cost to it, whether it's less money up front for you to do it yourself, the cost down the road is significantly higher. And so as a business person, you need to think about how do I want to show up online? How do I want to make sure my brand is recognized across all these different platforms? And that's the thing I think that, again, sets my photography business apart is we want to make sure you as the client are presenting your business in the best light possible in a way that communicates what you want to communicate to your audience. And so like we talked about earlier, how I feel like your website is like friendly, it's engaging. You can easily talk to you about a, a topic that's really intimidating. And that's the same thing for real estate. Like talking about real estate and selling a home is a big deal and people are emotional about it. So your brand, you may not think that a nice image of the front of a house is going to communicate anything about you, but it communicates so much. Like when I look on Zillow and I see a property that's not professionally photographed. Maybe the image is crooked. Maybe it's dark. Maybe the lighting is bad. I immediately think what's wrong with that property? Why isn't there professional photos? Why didn't this realtor hire a professional? What else aren't they hiring professionals for? Yeah. Where are they taking the, and the, the shortcuts and the cor cut in the corners? Like exactly. if they're cutting corners here, they cut in corners everywhere. So the spidey senses, like you're just like, eh, what else? Exactly. 
So you may be doing something that's going to save you a few bucks here and there, but how is it making you show up online? What are people seeing when they're seeing your brand? You want to make sure it's communicating what you want to communicate. And if you're an agent, I highly doubt you want to communicate on cutting corners. Exactly. I would hope that you don't want to communicate that. So having professional photography is so much more than just media of a home. We were talking about the other day, like Yelp. There's so many things to to show up on like Yelp, Google reviews, your website, your social media. There's so many things that can get really overwhelming for people. And I think the main thing is just to show up authentically and make sure you have that cohesive brand and that how you want to show up online. I keep saying that, but how do you want to show up online? Knowing that is so important. So what if somebody doesn't know how to show up online, if they haven't thought about that, is there Mm -hmm. some questions to be asked about what should I be thinking about when I show up online? Mm -hmm. I would say the first thing is how do you want to be perceived by your audience? Do you want to be perceived as someone who's professional? Well, then you need professional imagery. You need a professional logo. You need an email address that is not at AOL.com. Just there's simple things. How do you want to be perceived? And then from there, once you understand that, well, actually, how about I ask you, how do you want to be perceived as a tax professional? Absolutely. Trustworthiness. Long-term, like this professional relationship as a guide, as a Sherpa, sometimes I carry the load, sometimes Mm -hmm. I'm guiding. Money and taxes. Tax is the biggest expense that Mm -hmm. people have over their lifetime. And it's intimidating because as I start talking about tax planning, for instance, people are like, oh, I don't know <laughs> how much risk of it. Yeah. Do I, will I get audited? I'm, I'm scared. And so let's take that down a few notches. Mm-hmm. Let's unpack some of those myths and let's build that credibility. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we focus on the 80% and mm-hmm. only get 20% results. Yeah. But it's like, what's that 20%? Like hiring a professional and mm-hmm. having that peace of mind and knowing that it's done right the first time instead of having to go back and do it yeah. and again. Which is the way- <laughs> We're going to have to have a whole podcast about how you've helped my business from doing it over and over and over again <laughs> and all the mistakes that I've made because you've been vital in the success of my business. Yeah, baby steps, right? Just that 1% better each day. So it's like, yeah, how do we have those internal controls and all that stuff? Mm-hmm. So it's like making sure that there's, I can sleep good at night and if it's done by a pro and hopefully they're doing it right. Mm-hmm. And what have they done? That checklist. I liked how you talked about it. you have your checklist and that for me as a pro, the checklists are so important. If I go into a surgeon, I, I want to make sure the surgeon's going through the checklist. Mm-hmm. If I get on an airplane, I want to make sure the pilot and the crew are going through the checklist. We have enough air in the tires. We think we have enough gas to get yeah. there. No. Mm-hmm. Like, middle of surgery. I don't want to run out of air or whatever. So I just, yeah. yeah, I want to make sure that everything's double checked and that it's safe and there's safety in numbers yeah. <laughs> the old bad at dad accountant joke is like mm-hmm. why is it a good idea to have your best friend as an accountant and the the, the punchline is well because there's safety in numbers <laughs> and it's like a bad joke yeah. but it's just funny because we want to have safety and we want to reduce risk mm-hmm. right how do we have reduce risk is we have the standard operating procedure mm-hmm. sops so that we're just like checking through and like you have the checklist mm-hmm. and i have checklists so those checklists are so important. Yeah, absolutely. I like what you said about your brand showing up as trustworthy. And when you have those procedures and you show up again and again in the same way, it just extends your trustworthiness. As a business, you have to think beyond your initial presentation. If you want to show up as trustworthy, well, you have to also be trustworthy. (laughs) It's one thing to have a visual representation as something, but you also have to make sure you're holding up your end of the deal. So showing up as trustworthy online to me is having compelling visual images, a nice logo, a professional looking website, a you know, URL that is your business. I think it makes such a huge difference. And when it comes to real estate, that initial image, like I talked about, just says so much about you as a realtor, even if it's a listing for a property. You don't want to show up with the crooked, dark image because people are going to ask, where are you cutting corners? Same thing with your tax website. You don't want to have an unprofessional looking website because no one's going to want to utilize that for a very serious investment. Absolutely. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Those are all great, great tips. The first one is going to be understanding the power of the first impression. 
which we'll kind of talk about throughout the whole interview. And the main thing is align your visuals with your brand story and your audience to make sure you're showing up online in the way that you want to be. What happens when people are like, I don't know how to show up. I don't know how to mm -hmm. show my best side of things. Mm -hmm. and is there any like tips or pointers? Yeah, I can definitely share about that. And if you like want to authentically ask me questions like that, as we're getting into it, that's how I can answer. Cause that's perfect. Like how, how do I do this? How to align visuals with your brand story? Well, First, the first thing is to think of how do you want to be perceived by your audience? If you don't know how you want to be perceived by your audience, you don't want to know what you want to show up as online, then they're not going to receive that message from you. So first thing is to understand how do you want to show up? What does your business stand for? What are your values? And how can you communicate that through your online brand? How exploring costs and missed opportunities. Yeah, exploring the costs and missed opportunities. I was sharing with you the other day, I've had a client in the past who was taking their own photos and as soon as they started using us, they started getting higher offers. So you may be doing something that's going to save you a few bucks here and there, but how was it making you show up online? What are people seeing when they're seeing your brand? You want to make sure it's communicating what you want to communicate. And if you're an agent, I highly doubt you want to communicate on cutting corners. I would hope that you don't want to communicate. Having professional photography is so much more than just media of a home. Strategic boosting sales through online branding. We were talking about the other day, like Yelp. There's so many things to, to show up on like Yelp, Google reviews, your website, your social media. There's so many things that can get really overwhelming for people. And I think the main thing is just to show up authentically and make sure you have that cohesive brand and that you know how you want to show up online. I keep saying that, but how do you want to show up online? Like knowing that is so important. The importance of good imagery. And so tell me about the images, like what is a good image versus not a good image? Why matter? Let's sound zero mm -hmm. or basics, math 95. Yeah. Like, let's just go back a little bit before. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, images are so important in today's modern world because we are for everything online. Like when I want to go find a restaurant, I look on Google or Yelp. When I, you know, want to find a store, I'm looking online and the pictures that come up definitely impact me showing up to that location. And you have to understand that this is happening for real estate too. Like if you're listing a property, you have to have good visual imagery. So and a good image to me is one that is clear, has nice, bright lighting, good colors. It doesn't look like AI edited it, not too artificial, but just enough to capture your attention to want to swipe to the next photo. You've experienced before looking online. I'm sure you can think of like a restaurant that you didn't want to go to because the images were like, mm, not so good. And same with looking at houses online for real estate. There's so many ways to take a photo. Now we have these devices, you know, that we can take photos on. They do take really great photos nowadays, but without having someone who knows how to truly capture an image, it can, you know, lead to your downfall of having so a good image. There's a lot that goes on behind right, it. Yeah. I mean, a, a picture says a thousand words. Yeah. So have you had an experience where like you've seen a bad picture and they're like, oh, I'm not going there or I don't want to look at that further. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, I, I'm married now, but like when my dating years between being divorced and married, people posting bad mm -hmm. images, it's like, um, you know, that looks weird. Like the transparency and I don't know why my mind went to dating, but there's this mm -hmm. relationship that you have mm -hmm. business and depending upon the type of business it is, but like in my business where it's tax and accounting, it's pretty intimate. Absolutely. And I want to say like for your brand, I feel like you're really consistent on the type of imagery that you have and being someone that works in tax, that's an intimidating field for a lot of people. Like when they're going to your website, it can be so easy for them to feel intimidated, even if it's a professional photo, but it's giving off the like idea of not being good enough to be able to work with that person. Like it's so easy to come across, but your imagery is like kind and inviting and you make tax seem like something that can be easily approached and talk about. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be a scary thing. And so when it comes to your brand, you've done a really good job of having inviting imagery. And that's what I want to talk to people about today. Like how do you want to show up online and how do you want your clients to perceive you? Because your imagery tells a story before you ever even get to speak to them. The real estate marketing strategies. And especially with real estate mm -hmm. developers and it's like, 
making sure i know that you do video too right besides photo mm -hmm. that's really cool i'm excited to hear more about the yeah. aerial type stuff mm -hmm. uh, we we do all kinds of services we do photography 3d tours we have a couple different options with that we do floor plans we do the aerial video you know with the drone we do aerial photos and we do um, what we call internal video as well which is like a cinematic video where we're taking the camera through a property to capture it and we offer all these services because we want to offer marketing under one roof there's so many different people that you can hire for your marketing the importance of professional property presentation we want to make sure if you have a property that you can come to us and we can have a whole buffet of services that you can utilize to make sure you're presenting your property in the best light possible and kind of like your opening story, you talked about how, oh, you had a home that sat on the market and it, we had to take price cuts because the pictures just didn't look that great. Maybe you took them yourself because you do have a nice camera and you have an eye for it. Whereas the house down the street sold for fast. I would love to tell you about an example that just happened recently. Okay, so we had a client come to us. They worked with us for a really long time. They're like, hey, we have this listing. It's a unique property. Um, it's in Happy Valley, Oregon. Um, it's a really populated area now in Portland. It's a desirable area. You want you want to move there. House prices are a little bit higher there. And to be able to set a property apart there is a little bit more difficult because there is unique properties. There is beautiful properties and there's higher price points. So your competition is a little bit harder there. And this property in particular was an older home. It was on acreage, but it was, it was a cool property. But the agent was concerned that we weren't going to get the price point that the city did to be able to sell. So they're like, what do we need to do? Like, give us the best listing package possible. And we did photos. We did drone. We did the internal video. We did a 3D tour. We did the floor plan. We went like all out and did like the best media production of this house. It was listed at, uh, I think it was $700,000 is what it was listed for. And it got offers up to $850,000 within a week of it being listed in this market today, 2024. Over asking is kind of unheard of at this point, like maybe a few thousand here and there, but 150,000 over asking, unheard of. And because I was so invested in this property, helping this client sell it, I was tracking what was happening on Zillow. And within a day, this property had 635 views. Whereas other properties in Happy Valley had been on the market for a week or two, only had 200, 300 views within a day. So that shows exactly like why marketing makes a huge impact. And obviously having a realtor who knows how to sell a property and knows the correct price point to put it in at makes a big difference. But there's other properties in Happy Valley that are similar lists that price point right down the street from this property that have been sitting on the market and actually taking price cuts. So it was really cool to be a part of that. And it was just another great example of how your imagery as a homeowner and as a realtor makes a significant impact in your business. What was all included within that? You, kind of, you mentioned that you might have already said it. So we did professional photography. Yeah, professional photography. We did the 3D tours, which are really cool. I recommend 3D tours for anybody to get them because there's so many buyers that are coming from out of state or maybe don't want to go to a property yet, but they want to see inside of it more and they'll go and tour it 3D and it kind of incites them to want to go there and see it in person. So we did the 3D tour. We did the drone aerial photos, which was great because this property in Happy Valley was a nice location. It's, it was a good way to show like where it was in the area, how easily accessible it was to the highway, how close it was to the grocery stores nearby, how close it was to schools and parks. Um, that's something that's unique that aerial photos can do that we just can't get from the ground. And then video, that's just a good way to keep people engaged because we watch so much video on our phones now. So this team, this agent that we that had hired us posted video on social media on all the platforms and got views from all these different channels that were like leading them all these different audiences to this house and what else did we do we did a floor plan and some room measurements just to make sure the accuracy of the property online showed up well yeah i think about like from a maintenance standpoint how like an aerial view would be important let's take a look at the roof because if it's like a three-story house or something mm -hmm. tall and gating, yeah uh, like, hey, that tree is really close and maybe I want to cut it down or hey, I want to put solar mm -hmm. panels on, but there's that blockage or where's the solar panel? There's so much possibility because when people move into a house, it's like, 
it's going to be their house and they're going to repaint the walls and new carpets mm -hmm. up. So give them like more data is going to be really helpful. Yeah, exactly. And like, as a human, we want more information. We want as much information as possible, especially when it comes to a big investment, like purchasing a home. So when you have a property that has a full spectrum of this visual marketing, you can really like spend a lot of time going through the different things that maybe you wouldn't notice from the regular photos or the video that you noticed in the 3d tour. So I think like having that is really important. And I think that's another thing that drove more buyers into this property because there was so much visual um, data there that people wanted to go see in person. They wanted to put an offer in because they saw the ticker going up on Zillow of how many views this property was getting. It was favorited, like it created social that um, desirability and social proof for this property. And as an agent, a few thousand dollars on this marketing package. It wasn't cheap. It's investment, um, right? It's... But the payoff of that, weeks later, closing on a property for $150,000 over asking, they get a few thousand dollars for the marketing package. IRS audits and real estate marketing. Actually, because as a former IRS auditor, mm -hmm. I tell people. Absolutely. The IRS is buying a house. They already know the neighborhoods. They've already, they've done the research. They know the bedrooms. They know the houses are typically bought on the street, similar to an IRS audit. Audit's done on the street and then they just go in to inspect it. Will the house fall down, or the, the foundation, the roof, and look at the big things. And then they go, go in to expand or contract the, the scope of the audit. But I think of the IRS audits and state audits as, especially with AI, with the IRS, they're getting more and more insight to businesses. And, and especially as people publish things online as they're like, oh, I'm making all these millions of dollars. And the IRS is mm -hmm. like, oh, okay. <laughs> but you're not paying tax, like what's up? And so then they go audit, then they go look at bank statements and all that stuff. So when these promoters are like, I'm making <laughs> all these money, but then they don't file. Mm -hmm those tax returns that show those millions, yeah. there's a problem. Are people setting themselves up for red flags? I know that was a total tangent, but it made me think about it. like people mm -hmm. are kind of putting themselves at risk because maybe it's too good, right? It's like they're <laughs> presenting themselves as too good and they don't want to come up with a false impression. So mm -hmm. this aspect of like, yeah, you want to present yourself really mm -hmm. well. And that's great because like what you mentioned with the square footage and the 3D and all that stuff, it does give you yeah. know, people that, that data, and I know I'm mixing the IRS and all this other stuff, but it, it does relate because it's our money and we got to eliminate risk. And no, I think I'm about so completely. much of life yeah. is offense and defense, defense. And I have that cadence of defense, defense, offense, exactly. where it's two parts defense, one part offense, because the defense wins championships, offense wins games. And then my mantra. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I like what you said about, you know, how the IRS, they just want more information, just like we do when we're trying to buy a property, we want all the information we can get. And if you're sharing that information authentically, <laughs> then it's going to come across that way. And I think 3D tours are really great for sharing that authenticity because you can't fake it on a 3D tour. Mm -hmm. Whereas photos, you can edit things here and there, but the 3D tour is capturing everything, like how the IRS goes in and they're checking everything. Um, but it gives peace of mind for when you're viewing a property or when the IRS is going through an audit, like they need to get all the data collected. And the more data you are able to give authentically, the quicker that you're going to get through it. Or like, even like when you're going on vacation, like an Airbnb or something, it's like the more data and it's like, Hey, taking photos of the washer and dryer. That, that's always a big thing. Cause I got three teens. And so I'm like, mm -hmm. how big is the washer and dryer in this room and this? And so it's like pre-planning so that eliminate mm -hmm. fights between the teens and stuff. Oh my gosh. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I like how you said that about like Airbnb because the photographs that we need to capture for Airbnb is different than real estate listing. And I think a lot of people may not know that either, because when you're looking at a real estate listing, you're more concerned about the the location, the square footage, can my family fit here? Where is the laundry room? Like, how can my family live in this in this area? Whereas Airbnb is like, okay, where is the convenience for me? I need to make sure there's the coffee pot there with the coffee pods. And that's not something we'd take a picture of in a real estate listing. Airbnb, like that would be a main key feature. You want to open the cupboards. Is there pots and pans in there? Is it ready for me. So the photos we capture for Airbnb are different than the photos we capture for real estate. The same with like commercial properties and restaurants we photograph. It's, it's different. It's the same kind of thing we're going and capturing the space, but what they're wanting to present to their audience is different. So you have to hire a photographer who understands 
but there's more going on beyond the images that you're telling. We've been working with Airbnb for a long time. Um, we do also do stuff with VRBO. It's a rental property. Um, the short-term rentals, you want to be photographing things like the coffee pot, like the, the pots and pans in the in the drawers. For real estate, you wouldn't necessarily want to open the kitchen covers and have photos. It would be weird, right? Um, but yeah, we work for lots of places like that. We do short-term rentals. And we love also doing commercial properties like apartment complexes. AI and the future of photography. So changes in AI and changes in, in your industry for AI and, and I see mm. self-flying droids and stuff and, and behind bicycles and stuff like that for like entertainment and, and whatever. Have you got into any of that type of stuff like the self driving, self-flying photography equipment mm -hmm. or anything like any opinions on those types of stuff? I haven't gotten into any self-flying. All of our drones are operated by a licensed pilot. And I don't know a lot about the self-flying drones, to be honest, because I feel like it's such a financial risk and you don't have someone that's in control. And I think that's why I like having someone on the ground who's watching what's happening and all of our licensed, all of our drone pilots are licensed and insured. And that's another thing, like a lot of real estate photography companies, they aren't licensed and insured. And there's no like certificate that you need to present to someone prior to flying a drone. Legally, you're supposed to have it, but people don't check for that. So as a realtor or someone that has a property, if you're hiring someone to fly a drone, regardless if it's my company or not, please ask them if they're certified and ask for their FAA certification and make sure that's valid because there's a lot of rules when it comes to flying the drones that not everybody has that licensing and it's really important. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. But for AI in the business, something that we do use, we use AI virtual staging where we can create furniture in the room as if it was really there and you can change the lighting on it. So we really enjoy using the AI features of that. And I'm a big fan of chat GPT and making sure our wording is coming across and automations. I love automations. There's a lot that goes on behind the scenes in my business. I use AI for a lot of that kind of stuff. Nice. Yeah. Love it. So where do you feel like the industry is going? You mentioned some ideas with AI and with the mm -hmm. digital stuff. Do you feel like AI could replace you and your company? Honestly. <laughs> Honestly, it's very possible. Like you can upload really beautiful photos and you can have AI edit them um, and make them better. But without having someone who really knows how to capture the space and how to make sure the AI edits are coming out properly and showing what you want it to show, there could be a lot lost in translation there. I have dabbled in some AI editing and sending my photos through an AI software to edit them. And they just... They're just not quite there. The technology isn't advanced enough to be able to deliver what we're delivering now to our clients. But I'm open to AI. I'm open to utilizing it to create better imagery, create more consistent imagery for properties. But right now, the technology just isn't quite there to produce what we can produce with multiple professional humans. With branding, how has professional photography when you think about branding and you consult with brand, when you're talking with people about mm -hmm. branding, as you mentioned, and you asked me earlier, have I seen images that has made or break? Do you, I want to move forward? Definitely. I'll share from the real estate perspective again, just because it's my main clientele. But when you present your properties online, like how do you want to be perceived as an agent? Because agents can take their own photos. You can hire someone who has a digital camera. It's your friend's cousin, your best friend's sister, whatever. You can hire anybody to take professional photos nowadays, but is it presenting yourself and your business in the way that you want to be perceived from your audience? And I think that's just where it begins. How do you want to show up online? What do you want people to see when they first see, see you online? And that's where the visual imagery comes in, whether it's photos, nice photos of a restaurant, nice photos of the food that you have to offer, nice photos of a listing, like they say a lot about you. So what is your brand? What are you trying to show up as? And how can you make sure you're being authentic and showing up in a way 
that is real to you and capturing the right kind of audience. So I want to ask you, David, your audience is boomers. A lot of it's word of mouth and just who do you mm. know and various mediums too, like YouTube and creating videos like this and providing mm. content, but I'm also doing workshops and communicating with people. So I do want to have a consistent brand and communicate and I wrote a book mm. and it has boomers on there and they're having a conversation and that's where my heart's at mm -hmm. because that's my parents and my in-laws and just like the, yeah. the wealth wave the 14 trillion dollar wealth wave that's going to be changing hands and it's, there's a lot of fraud out there mm -hmm. a lot of bad advice and so i want to make sure that i'm providing good advice and i'm avoiding those five most expensive words this could have been avoided there are so mm -hmm. many things that are happening from a legal tax succession financial planning standpoint that it's tax related now taxes now taxes retirement tax upon death and how do we help people and my definition of a tax is not necessarily what we pay to the government but what we pay in extra insurance or fees or whatever it is mm. that is going to cost us more than what we should be paying there's a tax of doing yourself and a tax of doing it two or three times or missing out in that story like i mentioned that person mm -hmm. that had to drop their house versus the house down the street. And as you confirmed in your story about that is true on a professional photography and having a good brand. The process and delivering photos to clients. Talking about your editing process, walking through and the, the process, taking the photos and editing and then uploading. Absolutely. So. Let's use real estate for an example, since that's my biggest clientele. Basically a realtor will go out on site to a property accept a listing, go through the paperwork to sign there. And then they'll call us and say, Hey, we need photos for this property on this date. Sometimes the agent will pay for professional stagers to come in to put furniture throughout the house. There's a lot of prep work that goes in. And then the homeowners, they get a checklist from us. Here's what we're looking for when we're coming to your property. I want to make sure all your lights are on, the blinds are up, the curtains are open, shoes are put away, just basic staging stuff that you just don't think about because it's like an emotional thing selling a house. Trying to wrap your mind about all the little details, it can get overwhelming. So we send over a checklist and then we do a little check-in one day before and say, hey, are you prepared for your photo shoot? Do you need anything? How can we help you essentially? And then the photographer shows up there on site and they'll go through the house and they'll make sure all the lights are turned on, make sure the staging list is complete. And then they typically start photographing the exterior of the home. It takes 10 to 15 minutes to the exteriors and they'll go in room to room and photograph each room. And then if it, you have a 3D tour, we'll then start the process all over, starting outside to go through the house again. Same thing if you add on more services. So the more services you have, the larger your visual package that you ordered, the longer the appointment's gonna take. It's about an hour per service. So an hour for photos, an hour for 3D, an hour for video, et cetera. And then once the photos are taken, our team goes and uploads, uploads them to our editing staff. Our editing staff is all remote. I have someone in New Jersey, someone in Florida, and then we utilize a couple editors that are in the Philippines and they're so wonderful. I love having them a part of our team, but we have a really fast turnaround with our team. We have to deliver photos by the very next day because listings need to go live typically. So we have someone on the clock 24 hours a day, which is what's nice with having staff in the Philippines. Their daytime hours are our nighttime hours. And so our editing team can stay working all through the night without having to do a night shift. Um, and then, so anyways, the photos get uploaded to the editing department. And then once they come back from the initial editing, we merge the images together. That's the first stage of editing because our team goes out and takes a bracket of five to nine images. We capture all the light in the room. We stack them together, basically. Once they're stacked together, they move on to the next part of the editing phase, which is where the senior editors on my team take over and they adjust the angles, make sure lines are straight and they adjust the colors, make sure they're accurate. And then from there, we upload them to our platform, which is where we deliver them to the client the very next day. There's it's a whole process and it's got to be quick because listings are going live right away. Once our clients receive the photos from us, they then will post them on the RMLS, on Zillow, and then the listing goes live. And once that happens, the public can see it. Yeah. Biggest tips and takeaways. Yeah. So to 
wind things down, wrap things, what, and we promised at the end, bring it all to number one tips and stuff. So let's bring this together. Yeah. So my biggest tips uh, is twofold, showing up authentically as yourself online, showing up the way that you want to be perceived, but also like we just talked about if you want to show up as trustworthy, you also need to be trustworthy. If you want to show up as professional, you also need professional. That is the first thing, like understanding how you want to show up and aligning yourself authentically with those values is huge. That is like the baseline. And then beyond that, having those visuals align with your brand story. So step one, know your brand, know your values, understand how you want to be perceived online and follow that up with the professional visuals that communicate your values and what you want people to perceive you as. That's really what it comes down to. Yeah, those are gold nuggets. <laughs> so thanks for sharing. Those. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Appreciate it. I'm so glad to talk with you about all these things today. It's been so fun. It's been fun. <laughs> people want to connect and they want to find out more about RE Picks and about what you can do and how you can help make their property more valuable and to sell faster mm -hmm. and to you know, get more stuff turned. Connect with Ashley. Well, but you can find us online. Our website is www.repix.com and it's spelled R E P I X is in xylophone, S is in Sam.com. And our phone number, you can text us or call us anytime 971 295 1676. We'd love to hear from you. Love to produce some visual marketing for you, whether you have a room that's for sale, a rental that you have, full space. Maybe you're a developer that wants to photograph the stages of the process of a project you're working on. We'd love to be involved with any of that with you. Excellent. Great. Well, thank you for coming on. I'm excited to produce this and get yeah. this out into the ether and whatever you're watching so we can cut there. <laughs> Subscribe for more great content.